Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Our last break of the night is going to be a nice one. 2023-24 Donruss Basketball. Hobby edition, half case break, second half of the case, pick your team four. And uh, if you bought, if you uh, followed the instruction, instructions and you bought two teams, you got a chance at the Spurs. So we did not sell the Spurs. So you got to buy at least two teams. First off, thanks everybody here for getting in on the action. Congrats to the people who won the teams in that filler. All right, now let's sort by your first names. So Andrew bought two teams, that's one entry. Brian bought six teams, that's three entries. Jamie uh, ended up with four teams, that's two entries. Jonathan, two teams, that's an entry. Kevin, two teams, that's an entry. Matt with three teams for the purpose of the promo, two count, that's still an entry. And Robert only got one team. And Tristan with eight teams, that's four entries. So let me just kind of spot check this here. So Andrew only got, Andrew got two. There's one. Brian got four. Oh, check that. Brian got six. So that's three. Jamie with uh, four teams. That's one. Jonathan is in. Justin only got one team. Kevin is in. Matt is in. Robert only got one team. Then Tristan's eight, four entries are in. Excellent. So it's a total of 13 entries. Nope. Nope. Those are from old breaks. Sorry, here's new dice, new list. There we go. Name on top, after seven, we'll get the uh, Spurs. Four and a three. One, two, three, four, five, six, and fingers crossed. Seventh and final time, Kevin. After seven, Spurs going your way. All right, so now let's realphabetize by team. And you know the old saying, print and rip. All right, friends, here we go. So here's the, here we are on the 31st. It printed out a little weird on an angle. Pick your team four. Even numbers are generally the second halves of half case breaks. Um, I don't know who ended up with last spot and mojo before I pulled all these teams out for the filler. Stand by, this is very, very important. Was it you, Matt? I think it was Matt. OKC and the Pelicans. All right, so there's that double last spot mojo. What they say around these parts, 70% of the time, last spot mojo hits 100% of the time. So we'll see if that holds true here as well. Uh, folks, w whether you like it or not, the NFL season is over. It's only the Super Bowl left, and now we've got to start shifting our brains towards football or to basketball, baseball, hockey, soccer. So hopefully this will kind of get us into that basketball mood and mode. Let's check out the, uh, the scoreboard for Wednesday, January 31st, 2024. Bulls beat the Hornets in Charlotte 117 to 110. Bulls playing some, uh, some better basketball lately. They thought that they were gonna be a selling team, but now they might not be so eager to sell. Pistons fell to the Cavs in Cleveland 128 to 121. Uh, Pistons are playing better, but Cavs, are 29 and 16. Clippers beat the Wizards in Washington 125 to 109. Heat beat the Kings in Miami 115 to 106, snapping a seven game losing streak for the, for the Heat. Pelicans beat the Rockets 110 to 99 in Houston. Uh, no Luka, no Kyrie. Timberwolves took care of business against the Mavs 121 to 87. Magic beat the Spurs 108 to 98. Uh, Thunder beat the Nuggets 105 to 100. 
Suns beat the Nets 136 to 120, and the Bucks fell to the Portland Trailblazers in Dame's return to Portland by three. Portland beating the Bucks 119 to 116. All right. So we're going to flip through these. These are commons, but everything ships. All right, but we're going to slow down where the rated rookies come around because we want to try to grab some of the some of the upper tier players in the league. All card ship or upper tier rookies. But let's breeze through these commons. Again, all cards ship. But he's having a nice season too. So is Jaime Jaquez. I think he's like third or fourth in scoring. There's AJ Griffin. That is to 49. And here's our first Wembenyama. That's a Hardwood Masters insert. Wembenyama. That will go to the Spurs. It's going to go to Kevin. And the AJ Griffin goes to Atlanta. That goes to Jamie and the Hawks. Also, since all cards ship, as long as you see it, if I miss like a variation or something like that, don't worry about it. You'll get it. So obviously, the key player we're looking for is Victor Wimanyama. That's the key rated rookie. Chet Holmgren is second in uh, MV, MVP, Rookie of the Year uh, voting or whatever you want to call it, odds. But his rookie card was last year. There's Miles Turner to 199. So Wemby's leading it. And there's a Wemby. Numbered, not numbered actually, but that's in the, uh, I guess that Argyle pattern, if you want to call it that. That's nice. So it's clearly a variation, a parallel of that. I don't know what those go for, but I'm sure a crazy amount. Crazy for a card like that because of the Wemby factor. Brandon Miller's having a nice season too. And there's Jalen Pickett, rated rookie auto for the Nuggets. That's going to be for Brian. I'm not sure how he's doing. We had those numbers up. I kind of, I'm kind of curious to pull that up. NBA.com stats, season leaders, see all player stats. Um, advanced filters, and we want to get rookies, and then I don't want to get halftime, or I want to get NBA the app, get stats. So just going by, where am I? Oh, I want, I want average. I want per game. There we go. So yeah, Wembenyama it has 20.6 points. That's what he's averaging per game. Only over only 28 minutes a game. Chet Holmgren is second, 16.7 points a game over 30 minutes a game. And then there's Brandon Miller, 15.3 points a game. So there's a there's some some rookies including Scoot Here's John Collins die cut to 25. So there are some rookies doing pretty well. Contributing significantly to their teams. So Jaquez is averaging 13. Scoot's averaging 12 a night. But playing over 20, 25 minutes a night. So all good signs. Making strong contributions to their teams. That's what we want to see. And there's our first Wenbanyama rated rookie base. Kevin and the Spurs. And Alex Caruso for the Bulls to 149. We'd love to see him back with the Lakers, but I don't think the Bulls are going to part with him. I don't think the Lakers have anything the Bulls want. Tristan with the Bulls. Keep it on Cam Whitmore and Amen Thompson. There, there, there's some upside for those guys as well. For the Rockets, that'll be for, uh, it's going to be for Tristan. Uh, 
Colin Castleton to 25. Quentin Grimes to 99. I know, it's February, yeah, I mean, it's going to be February 1st for me by the time I get home. I've got about another 30, 40 minutes left in this break. Colin Castleton has showed some upside in Summer League. Um, I would like to see, uh, I'd like to see him get a few more minutes, see what happens with him. Lakers, that's going to be for Jonathan. Derek Lively looking lively for Dallas. That's going to be for Matt. All right, that's box one. Here's box two. Yeah, I think this break's going to take me about half an hour past the hour. You get a little overtime from Joe. But yeah, the month went by really, really quickly. Oh, that's right, Dunk Duncan, six hours off the second. Uh, what's my take on Grumpy LeBron today? What did he tweet out? What, just an hourglass? Is that it? Just an hourglass emoji? What, what, do you, what does that mean? What does hourglass emoji mean, Duncan? Time is ticking? Time is running out? No feedback for his teammates? I mean, it's running out. It is running out. And he doesn't think, I'm sure he knows, I'm sure Rob Polinka, GM for the Lakers, knows that. You don't think his teammates know that? Everyone knows it. Probably at the Lakers. That's kind of what he does. I think he did. I think he did something similar last year. You know, some sort of passive aggressive tweet, and then the Lakers made some big trades. Although they've been a little quiet so far this season. I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, there's Pau Gasol speaking of basketball, talking with some of the guys on the Golf Channel. Pebble Beach this weekend, big pro am. Brandon Miller's are going to go to Brian and the Hornets. Here's a Chris Duarte to 199. Yeah, I'm not sure what the Lakers can do this year. Uh, I feel like last year there were assets that they could move. I don't know how many people actually want to give up anything significant for D'Angelo Russell. He would be the main part of the trade. And I don't think the Lakers want to give up... I don't think the Lakers want to give up uh, Austin Reeves unless it's going to be for somebody significant. Like, if it's, unless it's a significant move. You know, and like, DeJunta Murray is not, or DeJunta Murray is not significant, significant enough. I can spit that out. Uh, Jordan Clarkson goes to Jamie and the Jazz. Coot Henderson, all of those are going to Portland. That's for Andrew. I don't buy the chat about only being, I'm not saying that. Yeah, I mean... That's an awfully, it, it's an awfully risky way to, to go about it, right? To do the play in and then take, have the risk of just being knocked out after one game or putting yourself in a seeding situation where you're facing a team that's, that's been, you know, on top for the bulk of the season. There's another Wembenyama. Maybe LeBron can flip a switch. I can believe that. I don't know if a team can flip a switch. You know, LeBron's just like a different kind of talent. You know what I mean? Here's Danny Avija to 49 for Andrew and the Wizards. There's Asor Thompson. Nice retro series. I mean, yeah, well, the team is not good. They, the, 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 there's an old NFL coach that said, you, you are what your record is, you know? Who cares about what you could do, what your numbers could produce, what you have produced? You know, the Lakers, as constructed, are a 500 team. Sometimes 
So I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, he hasn't really... I mean, he was always going to be a work in progress. I mean... I think, the, I, think the, I think Lakers and their fans, we did expect a little bit more out of the group that we brought back from Austin Reeves and for Hachimura. But there has been some injuries here and there, but every team deals with injuries. You know, I think... I think when everyone plays to their averages, this is the team we have. When the team plays above average, I mean, they could... They could get to a Western Conference final like they did last year. Here's Taylor Hendricks, press proof to 199. It's for the Jazz. That'll be for Jamie. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Trade deadline's what, in about a week? Week and a couple days? Something like that? The 8th, maybe? February the 8th? There's Jaime Jaquez. Yeah, then good team. You're right. Good teams find a way to win. But I think the frustrating thing, and this is where, and there's Philip uh, Petrusev to 75 for Philadelphia. It's for Kevin in the Sixers. There's Luka Doncic to 149. Um, here's the problem, Duncan. Is like, is like I feel like the Lakers are will play down to competition. I think that's the other thing. So you know they're good because they can beat good teams. So they're why aren't they beating bad teams? You know, or you know why are they falling short to to not as good teams? You know, the other thing is like. Games where Anthony Davis is, you know, close to healthy, whatever his injury status is. And when LeBron's not around and they're also not playing well, it doesn't bode well for the future as well. You know, so. So I think. Uh, so I think that's part of the issue. So now is that a coaching thing? Is that a player motivation thing? You know, so like, that's kind of the, that's sort of the issue. Even when mostly healthy, I just feel like sometimes they're, I mean, sorry, now, now Duncan's got me on this, on this now. I'm just going to take a quick look at the schedule. I mean, let's skip, let's skip like a month. Let's go from like December. Right? You beat Houston. You beat Phoenix. You beat the Pelicans. These are good teams here. You lose by only by a couple points to Dallas. You beat San Antonio. Then you lose to San Antonio. Lose to New York. Lose to Chicago. Lose to Minnesota. These are good teams, I guess. But, you know, it's sort of inconsistent. And you beat OKC, who's been playing great this season. You beat them by nine. And you lose to Boston by, a, you know, seven, eight points here. Almost nine points. Then you beat Charlotte you're, like you're supposed to do. Then you lose to Minnesota by two. You lose to New Orleans by 20. You lose to Miami by nine. You lose to Memphis by almost double-digit points. Then you beat the Clippers 106 to 103. You beat Toronto barely by a point. All right? So you st think like you're kind of turning things around. And then you lose to Phoenix by over 20 points. And you lose to the Jazz by nine points. Then you beat OKC, who are a good team. So they get up for OKC, they beat Dallas 127 to 110, then they lose to Brooklyn by 15 points. They beat Portland by 20 points, and they lose to the Clippers by a handful of points. They beat Chicago 141 to 132, beat the Golden State Warriors in overtime. Then you lose to the Rockets, you lose to Atlanta. You know, and then you beat the Pacers, I guess, who are a good team. That was in December. Oh, December. Oh, that was a makeup game. And then here we are in February all of a sudden. So it's tough.
Rex was asking if my Raiders Lakers and Dodgers, which one stressed you out more? Yeah, Dodgers, obviously. Because they have the most to lose. Here's Shaden Sharp. Nice. 28 out of 99 for Portland. That's going to be for Andrew. Yeah, I mean, the Dodgers are actually expected to win. None of my other teams are. Um, there's Max Strauss to 99. And I guess Liverpool Football Club has been cruising as well, so I am not too stressed about them. I just want Jurgen Klopp to go out with with a Premier League title. Maybe that's that. Maybe that's the better way to put it. Maybe they're actually stealing wins against good teams, and then and then just taking the foot off the gas against better competition or lesser competition. Yeah, uh, Lakers are expected to win for the most part. I guess that's what the national media would have you believe, but and the, and you know the. Uh, Sort of delusional Lakers fans, uh, of which there are many amongst my brethren. <laughs> um, they're not a very good team, though. There's KCP to 49. That's for Denver, that's for Brian. Yeah, Lakers could be a good team, but my expectations. I mean, we knew that this could have been, this could be the other side of what the Lakers season could look like, just a 500 ball club. But what are you going to do? You know, a lot of people like to. But LeBron James is a blessing and a curse. There's Caleb Martin to 199. You get LeBron James, you're almost assuredly mortgaging your future so you can win now with LeBron James. That's what LeBron James expects you to do because that's how he's done it his career and the results have been trips to the finals and some rings. Now on the tail end of his career, although doesn't look like he's at the tail end of his career, but this is the tail end of his career. How do you balance trying to win now and still be in a decent position of not doing it? I mean, Lakers are effed anyway. Once, once LeBron leaves, you're stuck with Anthony Davis and this giant contract. And, and in, the, in the games where Anthony Davis is playing without LeBron James, he's not taking over the way that he should. It doesn't lead me to believe that suddenly he will once LeBron retires. Is Mike Conley press crew for the Timberwolves? That's going to be for Brian. So I don't know what the future will hold. Scotty Barnes to 199, but that's what you sign up for when you get LeBron. I think I, I think everyone should know that. Got another Wemby, that might be a little different. Yeah, that's a press proof Wemby, Kevin. So you can see right there, a little bit different. That was in the sort of parallel spot. You kind of see a pattern in this Donner's basketball. All right, two more to go. Yeah, Lakers' upcoming schedule. I mean, I was telling one of my colleagues here who's a, who's a Lakers fan, I was like, man, all these games in January are going to be really important, and they did not perform very well in January. But they've got a rough...
couple games ahead of them to finish off the Grammys trip. They're at Boston tomorrow and at New York. Those two teams are pretty tough. I'd be happy if they split it. I mean, they should beat Charlotte, but you never know. Then they host Denver. They host New Orleans. A couple playoff-bound teams. They should beat Detroit. And they're at Utah, at Golden State, versus San Antonio, at Phoenix, and quote-unquote at Clippers, at Wizards, or host Wizards, and then that's February right there. But there are three games before the trade deadline, which I think is like the 8th, Thursday the 8th or Friday the 9th. So February 1st, Boston, February 3rd, New York, February 5th, Charlotte, and then trade deadline should be right around there. So if the Lakers look good against the Celtics and the Knicks, maybe they stand pat. They don't look good. Maybe maybe they'll maybe a, maybe they'll make a move. I don't think it's the everyone wants to blame Darvin Ham. I don't know. I mean, he might be part of it, but I don't know if he's really the main reason why the Lakers are struggling. I think a lot of it's. I think. Uh, I think the GM doesn't get enough criticism. Another Victor Wembanyama, another one coming up. I mean, he's the one that brought Russell Westbrook on team, pretty much wasted a year and a half of everybody's time. You know, he did recover nicely with the Hachimura trade and all that stuff last year, and then he got to the Western Conference Final, and I feel like that. And here's uh, Bilal Kolabi, 79 out of 99 for Andrew and the Wizards. I feel like that bought him some time, but I feel like he got a little lucky there. I think some roster construction, some free agency moves, some contract signing has not been as stellar as it could be, which is funny because he's a former agent and you think you would think he'd be better at those deals. There's another Wembenyama retro series. We got GG Jackson to 99, that's for the Grizz. Uh, that's for Jamie in Memphis. There's Malcolm Brogdon to 199. Yeah, the Knicks, I mean... Knicks have made some nice moves. They made it. They made a couple trades. Well, they added Jalen Brunson last year, which is a good fit for that team. It's currently the town, so 149. And then they, um, and then they made that deal. They made that trade with the Raptors for OG, right? OG and OB. I mean, you know, basketball's all about spacing, right? And I, th I think they've, they've found some nice spacing there. And it's clicking. It's working. Yeah, I think he's just on a team where it's some good spacing. Spacing's everything in basketball. People forget about that. You can't just add a bunch of, you know, just all-stars together and you think it all of a sudden it's going to work. You know, but if they're if they're blocking each other in the same positions, if they're occupying similar spaces, it just doesn't work. Which seems obvious, but I think when people are like constructing rosters or or you know doing like trying to trying to speculate on trades, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. But but if. Uh, Julius Randle could come back healthy. That could be a dangerous team. Yeah, Clippers. I mean, I'm there's Nick Smith Jr. die cut for the Hornets. Clippers. I, as a Lakers fan, I'm terrified that they're going to win the championship. And it's going to be who knows how long. Clippers fans lording it over LA fans throughout the. Uh, there's crunch time. Cade Cunningham, nice Detroit. Justin. I'm just going to lord it over the Lakers. I guess the Lakers can always come back with a total number of chips. But that argument always seems to fall flat 
on the interwebs. So what have you done for me lately? Like, well, what have you won for me lately? Is this what it's coming to? Watching women's amateur golf? If there's any other live sports on. Actually, the LPGA is going to... Is do, are, they are doing their Asia swing in February. It's Don, uh, Davion Mitchell, the one for him, which I kind of like because it gives me some live sports to watch when I get home. By right, the time I get home, I've, you know, especially the ladies' Asia swing, I think, is after the Super Bowl, maybe. They, they kind of have a weird schedule. They start off and then they take a break for a long time and then they start up again. But. All right, final box. But yeah, I think when, when February rolls around and there's no more NFL, baseball hasn't really gotten underway, just kind of mid-season basketball games, you know, then it, it gets, by the end of a, a, any given night of group breaking, you know, I've watched all the national games. I've probably seen all the sports center at least twice. We've seen like basketball highlights at least twice through. I've gone through the scoreboards by then, and then I kind of look at. Uh, then I'm just like, then I get home, probably midnight my time, and I was like, what am I gonna watch? No Australian Open tennis to watch. Well. Where could I watch that? Do you think ESPN Plus has that? I don't mind watching the ladies golf. Oh, Nick just messaged me and said, Michael will be doing YouTube tomorrow instead of Fanatics Live. So programming alert. I don't know if, I don't know if Michael knows that. I think he was expected to do Fanatics Live tomorrow. Well, stay tuned tomorrow. We'll figure it out. But as for now, Michael will be on YouTube tomorrow. And there's Keontae George. Nice. On-card autograph. Jazz. Jamie with the Jazz. Got the Jazz in the filler. I want to say Keontae George has been playing fairly well. Yeah, he's seventh in uh, average points per game at a, with 11 points per game. But he, he kicks in with a few rebounds a game, four assists a game, which I might, might be close to leading the rookies. Yeah, he's second amongst rookies in assists. So, Jazz are playing some good, uh, some good hoops as well. Here's a uh, Jalen Wilson die cut to 25 for the Spurs. That's for Kevin who won the Spurs in this break. Spurs could be, Spurs, I mean, Spurs are getting, they get a lot of national games just because of Wembenyama. So I've, I've seen probably Victor Wembenyama, more Victor Wembenyama games than any other player. I was actually in Vegas for the summer league and I saw Victor live too, and Derek Lively, and one of the Thompson twins, and Brandon Miller and Scoot Henderson. I saw a lot of players, a lot of fun, but um, not that I'm a basketball scout or anything like that, but I've watched the game for a long time. It'll be interesting to see how quickly it takes before he's like kind of taking over the league. Is that crazy to say? It's D'Angelo Russell to 99. I mean, he may he may have Greg Popovich stretch out his stretch out his coaching career for a little bit longer. Wembenyama might make Pop do that. He's pretty raw, obviously, but I mean, he's just naturally getting three blocks a night without doing much. You know, once he starts learning offenses and NBA offenses and defenses and really positions himself well on the floor instead of just reacting to things, how scary is that gonna be? And think about these young players, like how long it takes 
for them to, how long did it take Kevin Durant to really get it? I mean, we knew he was good, but how long before he was like, you know, legit good, I guess, in a way, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of scary to think, like, I guess Luca kind of hit the ground running. But Luca can still learn things from his game, which is which is also scary to think about. We all love comfortable and good looking golf shoes, but changing your brand actually help your golf game. Here's another one, Banyama. But if we get this, this guy plus you know, Plus, like, guys like Jeremy, so a lot of guys on, like, rookie contracts and stuff, a lot of young players they've accumulated, if they could have another good, because they're going to get a decent pick this year. They're not doing, they're, record-wise, they're not looking very good. So they may be in position, right? They're, they only have 10 wins. They probably pick third at this point. If, if you know, with the classic, if the season ended today. So they're going to get a really nice pick. Oh, here's a no autograph card which apparently are kind of rare. Jordan Hawkins, that's for the Pelicans. It's going to go to Matt. So, it's kind of weird, but there it is. Um, so if they... I'm trying to finish my thought here. There's Nikola Jokic. Another draft, another free agency window. Maybe Popovich and the, and the charisma of Wembenyama can lure some players there. I mean, they could get good really fast. They can get good real fast. Basketball is fun to collect, folks. I'll be honest with you. The secondary market prices are pretty good. If you don't get, like, top-tier rookies in, like, football or baseball, the second- or third-tier rookies, they drop off. I mean, you can still sell them for a decent price if that's your main focus here, but they don't go as well as the second or but like just if you took relatively speaking they don't go as well sell as well as the second or third tier NBA guys think about how global of a sport NBA is compared to baseball and, and, and American football Another Wembenyama. I wish there was like a cool numbered card, Kevin, but we racked up a few base cards and a press proof and some inserts. Well, I guess there's still time. There's still some cards left. But we're getting pretty much close to the end. There's a Hawkes. Yeah, I think not only because NBA careers can go longer, think about how small rosters are. Right? There's only, what? Here, no, one more Wembenyama Retro Series. Um, there's only, what, 15, 17 players on, a, on an NBA team with only maybe like 10 guys getting regular minutes. So the guys that get drafted usually end up playing so there's immediate playing time and exposure to the public you know in the in baseball draft there's a whole minor league system you have to wait for them to get called up to the minors from the minor to the big league team the NFL they have you know they have like 50 some odd players on the team plus practice squad etc 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 so there's just so many layers there but you get more immediate satisfaction because this guy gets drafted, you're, you're seeing him, you know, a few months later in the fall. So here's a quick little recap as well. And the global audience, it's, it's supply and demand, right? The demand is a global audience. Europe, Australia, the United States, Asia, China, Japan, Korea, and Europe. So it's a huge, it's a huge thing. So that's why secondary market values can be pretty surprising for even second or third tier rookies, especially if you get like a low numbered card or something like that. Pretty crazy stuff, but we'll get into more basketball this year, ladies and gentlemen, trust me. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching, thanks for breaking with us, and I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.